Hello YouTube people. Let's talk about this G-Shock. I bought it because it looks like almost the same as my favorite G-Shock. This one, 5600 BB. It has three differences. Rubber around the face is a little bit different. Not a little bit, but quite different. And next to these buttons on the face, there is text telling what these buttons do. And with this G-Shock, there is no text. The face is clean, only says Casio. And the third difference is the buckle. The square one has matte finish buckle and the surrounded face one has shiny buckle. Other than that, these are two identical watches. I already did the review on this watch. We'll leave the link in the description. You can watch it out. So I will just quickly run through the points, several negative points and a lot of positive points. Well, first negative point is rather strong. I would say these square G-Shocks have pretty difficult to use buttons, very uncomfortable. And I thought to myself, I have to try this one. Maybe this one won't have the problem with the buttons. And you know what? The buttons on this one are also very difficult to use. No difference to this square G-Shock buttons feel the same. Another thing which I miss is when I use the timer mode, I can set the time going up in numbers, but the secondary button doesn't go back in numbers. So it only advances in numbers. That's a little bit annoying because for example, on this G-Shock with Bluetooth function, I can go up in numbers and I can also go down in numbers. And with these G-Shocks, it only goes up. So that's a little bit annoying. I would say that's it. That's all the negative points. The buttons, kind of annoying. And this missing function that it can't go back in numbers. Other than that, I only see positive things. Starting from the screen. Even though it's negative display, it's one of the best negative displays. The same display as on the Square G-Shock. These LCDs are very good, very easy to see. Not as easy as, for example, F91W, but still as negative displays, these, these are very good. And they have this bluish tone when you expose them direct to the light. Blue tone, which looks very cool. Another very strong positive point, they have very good backlight the backlight is very good another positive point very small one but still i i like it when you go through the menu it beeps but it has different tone of beep when you come back to the main screen i like it it's it beeps differently when it's back to the main screen and speaking about the main screen i like that you can see the date and month in the same screen you don't need to press any additional buttons another thing which i like a lot and not all g-shocks have this function but when you use stopwatch or timer at the top of the screen in the corner you still see the current time and another positive point these g-shocks are very comfortable on the hand. They shape an oval and they sit on the hand very, very comfortably like that. It looks very good and it feels very good on the hand. Such a cool G-Shock. And speaking about the looks, the rounded one has less of the black space around the LCD. That's why the LCD itself looks bigger. And on the square one, it has a lot of black face around it. Maybe a little bit too much, I would say. And that's why this LCD on the square one looks kind of small sometimes. And this rounded one looks a little bit better proportion overall. And let's compare them how they look on the hand. This is the rounded one. Looks very cool. And the square one. This one, in my opinion, is the coolest G-Shock ever made. Super awesome watch. And this is the rounded one. And here they both together. Which one you like better? 
leave a comment please i want to know tell me which one you choose square one or the rounded face one uh, well uh, about the bezel about the different rubber i still have my old g-shock which i have used in testing that's how it looks now kind of broken a little bit but i had a free bezel from this watch which was also pretty badly damaged and i tried to modify it you know the biggest problem for me with these g-shocks is that these buttons are very annoying to use honestly only this bezel goes in a way it kind of prevents you to press the button it protects the button and you have to press the buttons with your nail so i tried removing sides of the bezel so i cut them off so let's put it on and let's see how it looks like so this is modified and that's how it's supposed to look original and you know what buttons are now easy to press but it looks honestly it looks ugly i don't like it if you considering doing this modification please reconsider it and don't destroy your g-shock i would rather have this one with hard to use buttons but it looks good rather than this one which has buttons easy to use but it doesn't look good anymore this was throw away bezel anyway so i just tried how it's gonna be and i'm not happy with the result yes all the buttons are very easy to press now with full finger i can press the button which i cannot do with the original but it looks bad it looks bad let's move on to the last positive point the biggest one the main purpose of this watch it was built to last it was built to withstand a lot of damage and that's the biggest plus point of this watch because it's super durable it is e extremely durable i have tried and tested the durability and have pushed this watch to the limits and beyond i did a compilation of these tests and the link is in the description you can check it out these both watches are just impressive and they're gonna last you a very long time okay thanks for watching have a nice day goodbye <music>